If Rama came to be the greatest example of kingship, of fatherhood, and who gave society a tremendous base upon which to establish the quality of dharma and family life, then there had to be a power to sustain him. That power was none other than Radha, uh, than Sita. If Lord Krishna came to do the job of establishing within us the potential consciousness that we have to become the witness to the drama of life, that we have to recognize the nature of the all-pervading God, that we have to recognize the greatness of God and that he has to watch his play and that we have to be like him and watch that play rather than become involved in it. If Sri Krishna came on the earth to establish the quality of divine diplomacy within us, that we have to be sweet, that we have to, if in order to convince people of a certain essence of truth, you may have to go about it in different ways at different levels. All of those sweet things that we know from the Bhagavad Gita, there had to be a power to sustain them. That power was Radha. If Christ came to open the narrow gate, if he came to absorb and dissolve and neutralize our ego, he said, I have died for your sins. This means that he absorbs all of the wrongdoings of the past at the time of self-realization. If he came to be resurrected, to prove that the spirit is eternal, how did he do it? How did he go through the drama? He was sustained again by the power of his mother, who was none other than the primordial mother herself, as the mother Mary. So, through the eternity of time, as the mother of the Buddha, as the wife of Hazrat Ali, who was the husband of Fatima, she incarnated at that time, to do that job of providing the sustaining force. But now, what has happened today is that that same being has taken birth as a mother to give us what Christ promised our second birth. The age of the father was an age of wrath, of stern supervision. The age of the son, Christ, was the age of nourishment, yes, but nourishment in the sense of setting that quality of sonship, forgiveness, sacrifice, and slowly introducing the concept of the mother. And the final age of the Holy Ghost spoken of by Joachim de Fiore and many of the other Catholic mystics. The age of the Holy Ghost is now. And the one to do the job has to be none other than a mother. This same primordial mother as has been incarnating over the eternity of time. So, Sri Mataji is here for one job. She's here to awaken within you that pure desire to be one with God. That residual energy, which is sleeping, but which in the presence of her or another realized soul, awakens spontaneously and effortless, effortlessly and without any pain, and gives you what you have been seeking for so many births. The time has come. Mother uses the phrase that on the tree of life, First, there were just a few flowers. Now the blossom time has come. And all of those blossoms have to turn to fruit. And this is why we're here. The fruiting is self-realization. But it has to actualize. It has, it has to happen. So when it happens, it manifests, as I explained to you, as these cool vibrations. When you feel these cool vibrations, you then are empowered with the all-pervading power of God. You can raise your own kundalini. You can balance the energies. You can clear the chakras in yourself and in others. Through the collective consciousness that happens, 
you can know which center within you is clear and which one is a little bit obstructed. And you know in other people. You can work it out in yourself, you can work it out in others. You can give the blessing to others. As you get it, you can give it to others. So it's a tremendous leap forward in our evolutionary cycle. So from this limited human awareness, we are now moving ahead into a new dimension, which has been promised by all of the great incarnations. You become a spiritual being. So, on this last night, here in New York, all of you should be absolutely in the mood of, I have to get something. But not only get something, because most of you have got it, but you have to, as if, suck those vibrations into your being, into the very being which is this subtle body that lies within you. Allow these centers to purify and to cleanse. Allow the Kundalini to come up with greater and greater force and allow yourself to enjoy all of the blessings of being one with the Spirit. Thank you very much. And may I introduce you to, again, Sri Mataji Nemaladini. I bow to all the seekers of truth. As Dr. Warren has told you that the blossom time has come. You could never have found so many seekers on this earth, say even before fifty years. Suddenly so many seekers have been born who are seeking something beyond. They are not satisfied with rationality, with materialism, with all the ideologies given by the people who talk that we should be satisfied with ourselves as far as matter goes, or at, as far as mental projection is concerned. They want to know that there must be something beyond. And thus we find there is a great shopping center that has opened, especially in your country, of all those people who think they can supply the arts. That is one of the signs which were described even by Christ. Of course, in our country, there are books and books written about those people who will come here as fake people and take full advantage of your seeking. Now, the problem with the Western mind is this, that it does not understand the dangers of getting into all kinds of things. And that is why they are really lured into things where they should not have been. And they have no knowledge also, in a way, what to expect of themselves. When they are seeking, what should we expect? What should happen to us? What is the criteria that we are realizing? Which is the way we can find out that we have got our realization? As it is, there is so much of book knowledge. The words, as Shankaracharya calls it, calls it Shabda Jalam, the net of words. And people get lost in those words. The books are there, the words are there, and the people start thinking that by reading these books or by understanding them mentally, or some of them think by remembering by heart, they will achieve their realization.
That means realization is only for people who are able to read. What about the people who cannot read? Are they not going to evolve? Perhaps they are going to evolve much faster than the people who can read because they have no complications in their heads. They are simple, straightforward people. I have seen the example of that in India. Not only that, but they are very sensitive they, because they live with the mother earth. They are extremely sensitive. They know a thug, they know a cheat, they know a hypocrite and they know the reality. Why? Where people live with artificialities, with artificial love, it's impossible for them to judge what is real and what is artificial. As I told you before, that minimum of minimum, you must cancel all the people who live on your money. They are parasites, in simple words. Or they may be your servants, but they cannot be the people who can deliver the goods. If they are poor, they live like poor people. If they are rich, they live there but absolutely detached. Now, what should we expect? What should happen to us when we say that I have got realization? This is the point. People do not know, they are not educated in that. They are naive about it. And that's why people have taken full advantage of their ignorance. I came ten years back and told them frankly about all these things with names and things, but they didn't like me. They said, why should you stop us from doing all this? I said, go ahead. But now what I find, most of them are lost. They have just become like cabbages. They are so mesmerized, they don't know what they are doing, where they have to go. Now, if the spirit has to shine within us, what should happen? What is self-realization? Let's see, if there's a light in this room, if you become the light, you don't see the light. But through that, you can see everyone, the light can see everyone. And what do you see? First you must see yourself. You have never faced yourself. People become mad. Till they are mad, they don't know that they are becoming mad. They get cancers, their diseases in the body is crawling up. They don't know they have got the disease, there's any problem. They just continue with the life without understanding. They have no way of finding out or diagnosis cannot be done by them. But once you become the spirit, the spirit when it emits through your fingers, when you start feeling enlightenment on your fingertips, you can feel what's wrong with your chakras, means your centers. Now if somebody can decode and tell you that this finger means that, this finger means that, this finger means that. The combination and permutations of these seven centers, one, two, three, four, five, six and seven, as shown here, we have marked with the colors to show you that how on the finger, hands, feet have different, but hands, you see the effect of those centers when you are enlightened. Before that you cannot. Because you are like a computer, you are really a computer otherwise also if you want to see rationally that you see something and you don't think about it but you see. What a perfect computer you are already. But the computer becomes a part and parcel of your awareness. You sort of become the master of that computer so that you can understand the decoding and the maneuvering of all the processes of that computer. This computer is beautifully made, is very beautifully made as you can see. It's not a mixed bag as most of the psychologists believe that you have to go to the subconscious to get to the higher superconsciousness. Here you can see on the left hand side is the subconscious and the collective subconscious. On the right hand side you have got this supraconscious that is the future and the collective supraconscious. Down below is what you call the hell and on top is the superconsciousness. To rise there, there is a passage kept ready for you. You have to pass through these centers and whatever problems are in the centers, if you start feeling on your fingertips and know how to cure them, 
you can make your kundalini rise very nicely and establish it all this knowledge can be yours very easily but the first thing is that you have to get your realization unless and until there is light and if i tell you this is not a snake this is just a god you are not going to believe it the light has to come to give you a complete idea about yourself so you know yourself first of all you must know physically what's wrong secondly you must know what's wrong with you mentally now people who are ego oriented they torture others they aggress others but they don't know that they are full of ego the people who are super ego means those who take tortures upon others they start indulging into their miseries and start saying i must suffer i must have done something wrong so i must suffer they accept that kind of life but after realization you understand that you are not your ego or super ego but you are yourself and you are not to suffer nor you have to aggress anyone nor you have to take aggression from anyone but you stand in the center as the light you have to just have the source of joy flowing into you all the time you have to get connected with the whole so that you are looked after by the whole you become part and parcel of the whole you are part and parcel but you are not aware you become aware of it. so the first thing happens to you that you come to know about your physical side and mental side whether you are emotional or whether you are ego oriented then you start in the center when i am talking to you maybe you are thinking of your past or maybe you are thinking about your future at this time but if i say that pay attention to yourself you cannot pay your attention is outside that's why this happening takes place which attracts your attention inside and when the attention is attracted inside then you start seeing yourself clearly understanding yourself that's the matter what's wrong with the world today is wrong with every individual if the individual is through the whole world is going to improve so physically and mentally you get perfectly all right all kinds of diseases can be cured by sahaj yoga you can cure yourself i don't have to cure because you become empowered by that secondly you also know what's wrong with you spiritually supposing you have been to a wrong group supposing you have been uh mesmerized by a wrong person now how are you going to know whether he is a wrong or a right person how will you find out supposing christ comes and stands before you how will you recognize christ have you any way, way of finding out anybody who talks sweetly has all these professional methods of enticing you you can follow break that but after realization you find from your hand a new kind of a vibratory awareness is flowing through these vibrations you can find out whether the person is false hypocritical or a devil if he is a devil you might even get blisters on your hand and that's how you correct your spiritual seeking where you have gone wrong if you know how to correct it the methods which are very simple the movement of your hands you can get out of that many people as you must have known that who have been to cults and fake gurus have suffered they have become like cabbages but all those people can be saved if they get their realization and gradually understand their power of getting out of it because spirit is self powered it works on itself so first of all you know about yourself as a result of that you drop out all your habits supposing there's a black spot on my sari i cannot see it and i am identified with it so anybody tells me there's a black spot i won't like it but supposing i can see it then i clean it myself when the nectar or a rose of god's love starts flowing in you you just don't need to drink you just don't need to smoke 
you are no more a slave of any habits. You just become a free bird. That's the real freedom, that nothing can entice you, nothing can enslave you. You become so integrated that if you don't want it, you just don't want it. Then your body will support you, your mind will support you, your spirit will support you. You are completely integrated at that point. That is first thing happens to you. As a person who comes to Sahaja Yoga, I've seen many of them were alcoholics. We have some artists in India who are great alcoholics, very great artists. They came to Sahaja Yoga and they dropped their habits. They dropped them completely. They were amazed. Next day they dropped it. Because once you get the test of this great understanding that you are the Spirit, you just become so powerful that nothing can overpower you. It has happened with me. Now, only thing is that what is the use, people ask me, of becoming? The becoming is actually is the epitome of your evolution. You have to, you cannot avoid it. If not today, tomorrow. If you don't accept it, then you'll have to face the consequences. But you have to become the spirit. The another very great thing it happens that the light that you have gives light to others. You can enlighten their light their candles are not yet ready, then you know how to put them right. You can enlighten their lights with your light without obliging them. Like the sun shines, it doesn't say, I'm shining, I'm doing all this, I'm creating chlorophyll, it doesn't, it just shines. But we can say that it doesn't do any work, or we say he does non-work, akarva. In the same way it starts flowing through your being, just working out. And anybody says, Mother, I'm thankful, I'm surprised, because if you are a part and parcel of my being, if this is my finger, if I try to soothe my finger, it's not going to thank me. In the same way, there is not the other left, you just start feeling another person upon your fingertips. That means you become again collectively conscious and later on as you grow, you become cosmic conscious. That means you know how to handle even the elements. But first you have to become collectively conscious. When you become collectively conscious, suddenly a tremendous compassion and love starts flowing. You feel so nourished yourself that you want to give. You have so much that the charity just makes you feel that you should give. And when this charity starts flowing, then you are amazed how it works. We invite people to our house to create good relationship. We give them food, we give them this, try to make good relationship. Here the relationship is spontaneous. You don't have to say about it, it just exists. You feel it, that is there. I'll give you an example of a girl who went to Sicily. And she was feeling very lonely. She said, now what am I to talk to these people, you see? There's nobody here who is a realized soul. She was feeling very lonely. Suddenly she felt some vibrations around. She turned around and she saw another lady sitting there. She said, are you the child of mother? She just got out of grasp. But she said, yes, I am. I could feel your vibration, you could feel mine. And just they understood each other that they were, they had never met before, their languages were different, they were from two different countries, they had nothing to do with it. But the love and understanding that they had, that all misidentifications drop off, that you are an Italian or you are an Indian or you are an American, you become a human being and a superhuman being who can feel others. This knowledge is not new. It was a secret knowledge for some time. In the sixth century, in our country, a great incarnation came as Adi Shankaracharya and he talked about it openly. And after that also we had many poets who talked about it. Hundred years back, William Blake came in and he said all about it, so clearly, he's such a seer, 
that he beats all the seers everywhere, the amount of precision he has used, because perhaps he felt that if Western mind has to understand, they need procedure. Even my house he has described, exact place he has described, even what Sahaja Yogis will be doing, where our ashram will be in London, what places I'll be visiting. I mean, to such a detailed thing. And surprisingly, we discover all this after we have been to that place, after we have done. Like in Lambeth, we had our ashram, and it was a very dilapidated house bombed. That is written down. It will be a, a house, a ruined house, because the people didn't have so much money. So, and then I laid the foundation. And he said, the foundations will be laid in Lambeth, come to Lambeth. Her sinews were built. He used the word her all the time. And the clear cut picture he has given, but people called him crazy, that he's a psychological case, because they don't have that super consciousness to understand. But if you ask any Sajogi, he understands it very well. So even only hundred years back there was somebody who talked about me. I would say seventy years back somebody talked about me in India. But people at fourteen thousand years back have also talked about Sajogi. So you can imagine that it is not that today I have just started coming out of the blue and some sort of a neo business started. It's a traditional growth in a very traditional way, respecting all the establishments, not to demolish anything, but whatever is not correct drops out by itself. All that is useless drops out by it itself. In the living process, even a flower has to drop out its scales if it has to become the fruit. In the same way, everything works out so naturally, the way it grows, that you are amazed that at the end of it you remain pure spirit. Your eyes become innocent. There is no lust and greed in it. What Christ has said, thou shalt not have adulterous eyes, that innocence is awakened within you and you just become, become innocent. Becoming innocent is not possible. But you just become innocent. You become really childlike. Your whole attitude towards life becomes childlike. Now some people may say that when you become like that mother, then what happens to our business? There was a girl in San Francisco, an Indian girl who had married another Indian. And they were having a shop. And she said, after realization, mother, I forgot uh, about counting, this, that. I was very meticulous, but I never made any profits. But now I'm told they have made so many profits, there are no more there, that they have 14 stores all over New York. So how things help you and work it out when you leave it to God? Because He is thousandfold more efficient. I mean, He is absolutely… we cannot compare Him to ourselves because He is perfect. Everything is perfect, but you must enter into His kingdom. If I don't come to America, how will I know how Americans operate? When I have come here, then only I have come to know. But if you see God's realm is such that when you enter it, you feel you are looked after every moment, how He guides you, how He watches you in the smallest way and in the biggest way is most surprising. It's not easy to understand His ways. One of the examples, I don't know if uh, Warren has told you. Did you tell him about the Bedford example, Warren? I must tell you this one, so that you will understand his ways are so great. I was in Bedford uh, one night and we had about 600 people there. I was speaking to them, about 7 o'clock I was there till about 10 o'clock. And 8 o'clock, about 10-15 miles away, one boy fell down in a uh, ditch, in the sense that there was a bridge and he fell down very low with his motorcycle. And when they sent for the ambulance, he just walked up and came up. So they were quite surprised that how did he come? So they took him in the ambulance to the hospital and the police also came. <coughs> and he told them that a lady, Indian lady, came in a white car, I have a white car. And she came down and she healed me completely. But she said at the base of the spine there is still problem, you come and see me at my house. And she went up. But the people who were there, they said, we saw no car, we saw no lady coming here. 
what is he talking about? So they wrote it down everything and next day, because he was completely all right, they were surprised falling from that distance, nothing had happened. He saw my photograph in the newspaper and then he said, this is the leaf. And that was at eight o'clock when I was speaking to so many people. So they were quite surprised when he went and told the police and he told the uh, hospital people that they informed the newspaper. And newspaper people wrote to us and one of our, our uh, Sir Jogi answered back and the whole thing was in the newspaper and they were quite amazed at it. Now how this has happened? You may say, how this can happen, Mother? It can happen because as you have got television, God has got tremendous organization of television. He has all telecommunication, everything. Don't think that you can only produce these, these are dead, these are good for nothing. His working is so great that Tatkshan at that moment, as soon as you see, as soon as you speak, as soon as you desire, it works. Even if somebody just desires and he is a man looked after God, even he may not be realized so. He is held in such a way. Now then after that they described all such happenings that took place in India and everywhere. But what I am trying to say that we are so much proud of what our achievements are. These achievements are nothing compared to what God has for you. In his realm, once you enter, actually yourself become so beautiful. You yourself become such a dynamic, beautiful, silent flame of love that you are not bothered at all as to what's happening around, what's going around. You don't get upset. You are silently watching all this joke, all this drama, hoping that one day the rest of the world will also become realized and the rest of the world will also enjoy the blessings of God. This is what is desired by every Sajogi <clears throat> and that's why they forced me to come to America that I should come and speak to people here. So we must understand what are the barriers within us not to understand divinity. Why we cannot understand divinity? First of all, we have had no education. Whatever education we have had is about the tree that is outside. But we have no education about the roots, doesn't matter. To go to the roots you have to become subtle. When you get realization, you enter into the roots and the knowledge becomes here in no time. You don't need much time to know about it because you become the light and through that light you can see. Like you must have seen these uh, people who work in the mines, you see they have a light placed here and through that they can see everything. In the same way you become the light, you don't see the light, you become the light and in that light you see everything. Now, when this happens to you, your attention, as I told you, becomes collective. Your attention starts feel another personality, another person, another persons, another people, and you start understanding what the problem is. And you can help them by just doing some sort of a blessing as you say and you can work it out. But there are people who are unwise. In this world there are people who are stupid. They need not be educated. Educated people also can be very unwise people. They need not be uh, very intelligent or they may be intelligent but wisdom is an innate quality in a person. If they are wise enough, they know how to handle the situation to understand themselves and they settle down in Sahaja Yoga in no time. But those who are not so wise take time. So one has to understand that we have to have perseverance about it, we have to settle down into it, absolutely master it because you become the master. That's the point is you become the master of yourself, you don't need any room. You become the master. As I will tell you, the left and the right is here we can compare it to the brake and the accelerator of a car. Left side is the brake, later we do it because you see people have attention very much confused. If you get up immediately their eyes go there. We should keep, you see he's just taking a photo. We have seen so many people in this world for a change keep your attention little concentrated. 
but it, it will happen. It will happen. Once you get your realization, your attention will be very, very nicely placed. Now, when you people know that this has happened to you, and when you become the master, you know the brake and the accelerator in you. But still, actually you are not the master, you are still the driver. And when you are a driver, you automatically do it driving, but still one should not say that you are a driver. You know the balancing of it, you know how to maneuver it, how to act. But then what happens? To become the master, what do you do? This realization takes place. Then you become the master and you see the driver, you see the accelerator and you see the brake in yourself and you just enjoy like a master. When you become the master, you cannot be slave of anything. No more slavery, the real freedom lies in becoming the master of yourself. No use mastering others, just master yourself. But that mastering cannot be done by lecturing or by brainwashing or by talking to you, but it's a happening that has to take place, the Kundalini has to rise and has to give you realization. This, unless and until this happens, we should not say that we know. No, knowledge is not when we are not one with the divine. It's like a uh, machine or you can say telephone not connected. We have to get our connection first, establish the connection and then we become the knower. And the knowledge becomes a part and parcel. But this cannot happen to stupid. It's not meant for stupid at all, neither for the cowardly. It is meant for people who are courageous, who are people of wisdom, who are not given to nonsensical things easily. That's why in Sahaja Yoga there are two forces working all the time. You may get your realization today here, but I won't say that you sustain it. I won't guarantee that. The reason is we have two forces, one is centripetal and another is centrifugal. By one force you are attracted towards it, by another force you are thrown out because you have come out of matter and the matter tries to drag you down. You have to master it in such a way that the spirit sits on the top of the matter and the matter doesn't dominate you anymore and for that you have to meditate and you will be in meditation. It's a simple thing to be done, there's nothing difficult. Sahaja Yoga is the simplest method. Sahaja also means, it means also a simple, easy, but saha, ja, saha means with, ja means born, is born with you. But today this is called in India as Mahayana. Because before this, all the realizations took place, of course, through saha only, by a Kundalini awakening. There is no other way. Only Kundalini awakening is the way you get your realization. Like some people say there must be some another way. There is none. Because like the seed has to sprout through the primeval only. In the same way, in your case, in human beings, the Kundalini has to rise to give you realization. There's no other way but this. It is called as Sahaja method, means spontaneous method. But today it is called as Maha Yoga because you'll find thousands of people get realization. People who have been with me in the villages of India have seen 6,000, 8,000 people gather. How many in here we have so many people, see how many have come. But if you go to a village, one village in India will be surprised. People will be pouring on there. Bullock cars, this Mataji has come. Because they know. And in that atmosphere, you see, the fragrance of this good news spreads so fast. Spreads so fast. Because that's the atmosphere for that. But where there is so much of mental activity, nothing can penetrate. They cannot see. They have no sensitivity to visualize what is good for them and what is what. So the last chakra is of the seven, all the seven chakras are in the last chakra. And that's how you get complete integrated. Your emotional being, your mental being, your physical being, your spiritual being, completely integrated. You go beyond time. You're not bothered about time at all. If you say, Mother, when will I get realization? I say, just now. That's the point. But if you don't get it, all right. If you get it, just now. It's Kundalini rises in a split of a second like a jet, it goes out of your head. But with so many people, it just struggles to go think. She's there at the base, just trying to come up. 
It's very difficult sometimes. I have seen some Kundalini's in such a bad shape that it horrifies me. What we have done to ourselves by this kind of a tomfoolery, what is wrong, what is wrong, going into this and going into that, we have really ruined our chances of our evolution. And then you say you are seeking how to help it. You have already weakened yourself so much. It takes time. It's one of my concerns that so many saints are born in this country, are born in the West, but where are they lost? What has happened? Why do they take so much time to take to reality? They are driven to any fake guru, to any fake person who is making money, who has got Rolls Royces, this, that. Why should it impress you so much? I can't understand. Like a newspaper I went to, and they said, how many Rolls Royces she has got? They said, she has no Rolls Royces. Then they said, we are not interested. Imagine, such a thing happening in your country, it's absolutely absurd that such a thing should happen to people who are intelligent, that God cannot be purchased, He cannot be weighed in Rolls Royces and all these material things, they are nothing to Him, they are not equal to the dust of His feet. And what is there to give up? Some people talk that you must give up this and give up that. When you are not holding to anything, what is there to give up? All this nonsensical idea that you give up this for God, give up that, God doesn't want all these nonsensical things you keep to yourself. But what happens? You get out of it. A thought rises and falls. Another thought rises and falls. When you are in the thought, you are materialistic, you are mentally uh, thinking and all those things happening. But in the center is a little space, which is called in Sanskrit as Vilamba. When you rise above that, then neither you are in the future nor in the past, you are about time. You are absolutely detached, you start seeing the whole thing as a joke. And then you become a real dynamic person and you create things which are superb and eternal. Like I would say Mudza was a realized soul, Michelangelo was another realized soul. They created all those things because they were realized soul. They could go out and see for themselves what's happening. All the great geniuses who have lasted, all useless, vulgar, cheap type have fallen. They do not stand. They cannot stand the test of time. They have all gone. See, Christ came 2,000 years back. How many artists from 2,000 years back have stood the test of time? He's still there. He's still there. Why? Because he was genuine. He was real. What he said was the truth. That's why he's still there. And that's what we have to understand, that once you become that genuine Self, that is you, the beauty, the glory within you, then you don't have to worry, you never perish, you get into the eternal life. Now, there's no end to my talking, I've been talking for now at least one and a half month continuously. Apart from that, I was twenty-one days out in tour in Europe, just two days in between, and again I came here. I have given so many lectures that in London, if you go, you'll find thousands of them. I have spoken individually about ego, superego, all these things, about chakras, all the details about it. I have gone to all the details, but in these three days, whatever I could cover, I have tried to tell you. And I also allowed you to ask questions, but yesterday, as you know, some stupid people came in and tried to disturb them. Now look at them. There is. I can't understand them because their daughter telephoned to me today also that her father has gone to work, he is not there. So they are cheating their daughter, coming and disturbing others. And why are they doing this? Why don't they understand their child? They don't believe in God, but the child believes in God. Let the child, because that child is free now in this country. You should allow the child to know about the God. Even supposing she does wrong, I say even if it is a cult, how can you stop? But they can't see the point, that the point is she is a different category of a person. She is a person who is a seeker. She has to see. Even if she is making mistakes, they cannot stop it. That is her nature. She will never stop till she has found it, because that is a special category. She is not a mundane type of materialistic personality who can just take to anything. She is a person who is a seeker. I know they have done mistakes, they have gone to cults, they have ruined themselves, whatever it is, but she will be born again and again and will be seeking because she is a person who is a seeker. It's a very special category and that special category is at the epitome of evolution. The mundane type of vulgar loafer type of people are not 
meant for God. He is not bothered about it, just a waste product. The people who are sinners are only under His grace and He is only worried and concerned about them and not about the people who may be occupying very big positions or anything. I mean, my husband is in the, uh, you know, he is the Secretary General and all that, but I never went to the UN at all. I said, I have nothing to do with UN. It has nothing to do because this is a special category of people. They will meet me here. That's what it is. One has to understand that it's not what family you come from, what nationality you come from, or what color you have, what education you have had, but what kind of a being, the inner being you have is important. If that is the seeker, then you get your realization. May God bless you. Now, can you ask me some questions? if you want, but don't try to dominate me. That's not good. Yesterday they misbehaved to such an extent. What happened? Is all right? She has come? Yes. She has come. She told the police. She's just sitting there quietly with her mother. Where? Any questions? Yes. Uh, Sri you spoke. Yes, he's asking it. Country would come to our country, the United States, as teachers who, or see, who uh, regard as false teachers or not being helpful or not realized, not realized. Yes, uh, are there any from your country who are in our country as teachers who we do respect and feel are realized as teachers? You've spoken of teachers and gurus who come from your country who are either false teachers or not realized. Other people are realized. But they don't want to come. Okay. I mean, are there any in this country? I agree, I agree. I understand. There are many real ones also in India. They know about my work. There are many who are real in India. And they know about my work. They respect me very much. And, uh, I asked one of them, who was a little girl, to come to the United States because I could not come these 10 years. He just refused, first of all. But with great coaxing, he came here within three days in Anami. He said, they'll never understand me, but that they want me to wear some horns. He would not stay. So there, there are many who are real Jews, but they're hiding themselves in the in some place. And they're very strict people, I must say, they are not mothers. And this is why our mother has asked why we have a reason for this. Because we are very hard. We don't like it. And these people want to uh, take advantage of our achievements without doing anything. We can do here for such a thing. That is why God has given us that mother. Because he gives us the mother. They say in the mother that he gave us a time to speak. And poor people, person is legs and hands were broken by other people. That's what they do to all the people. They will worship all the wrong time and they will always uh, trouble right. So I want to see him because he was telling people that now mother has come, so why do you want to trouble me to see him? And he told me that if anybody troubles you, mother, send him over. I didn't know he was such a strict man myself. So there was one fellow who was torturing my life in the program and he used to come and ask her questions. And very funny time. So I told him what I Mara was calling. He felt very great because he's retired as many great to do with Mara. He thought, oh, Mara has a good idea. Where do you see? After one month, I saw him. He was sitting like this in the passage by the very big club. And this fellow had put his legs on his neck and he was dangling. And people brought him up and I could see him. The whole thing was horrifying. And tears came into my eyes. I said, what's the matter? He said, Mother, I must tell you what has happened to me. I said, what happened? I went to that room. And then why? What happened? He said, I just told a few things of each. He said, what did you tell me? I just said that she gives the relationship to me, Tom, to get Harry, and she should be careful with this and that and all kinds of things I do. He said, you are wiser than Mother Harry. And that's all he said, and I slept off. In the night, he, he moves in on a tire. So the tire pushed me into a ditch, and where I fell down on 
and I put my legs. And uh, then he knows some uh, bread, call it duties. Uh, about three days later, he said, now nah, eat it. I was there for five, six days like that. Then he sent some people to pick me up, they washed me, they cleaned me. And then they said, uh, now see our food. So they brought him there. So he said, now nah, you take these legs, put them in your neck, and go dangling to your mother, she will cure you not. So I was really shocked at it. Another fellow, a doctor, is in front of him, of himself, and he tried to argue too much with me. So I said, you go and see the other man. So he went to see him. And when he went to see him, see, he told him uh, some sort of, I don't know what he told him, but when he came back, I saw him after 15 years. So I said, why did you think down so much? He said, what has happened? He said, every day I carry seven miles, two buckets of water, clean one Shiva's temple there, which was already happened. But for what? He said, that's what you said, that one was your to do like So I asked this man, I said, why did you do like that? He said, for a donkey, you must be donkey's food. You are too funny. They don't know how much we have got. They are extremely strict people. I've seen them. And they beat the disciples sometimes. Another one I met was called an Amar Baba or something like that. And he lived with your Amar Baba. And he came to see me in another place called Amar when his disciple was living, his name was at And uh, this disciple took me to see him there in the ashram of Atiya. And he, as soon as we entered, uh, see, you know, when we were going, his disciple told me, Mataji, my guru has been beating me very badly. So he went there and he touched my feet and all. I said, Why did you beat me? He said, You know, when going to see, we will bring you. Here he was wounded, so I hit him hard. And I said, really, you should not have done it. If you gave him realization, then he won't. But his Arbe Chakra is catching him. And the Arbe Chakra is catching, so poor fellow, you see, he does not know how to get rid of him, so he's smoking. He said, who cleared my Arbe I cleared my for years together, I know that. Why should I do it? I said, it's five minutes job. For you, he said, five minutes I cleared the Arbe Then he, on my way back, he told me that three days he gave to him hungry. How on a way well, before we join So they are like, they take your test too much and do this, but there are many people like that. Another one was here, the gentleman who my organization who started making money and I didn't know. He came back and he told me that he's doing very well. But the vibrations were very bad and we discovered that he was making money out of his vibration. And I spoke to him, I said, uh, why do you make money like that? He said, should I become more money? I said, whatever you are doing, I said, you are a teacher, why don't you become a teacher? Why do you want to sell vibrations? Did I give you vibrations with money? He said, no, what I have to do is shout it at me. But then he went away and said, yes, I'm two hours. And he went to see him in Kali, this fellow. And the description is like this, because he came back and he told me. He said that as soon as he went there, he started, the group started throwing big stones at him. So I ran away to the station. And the people from there came and told me, that uh, Guru is very angry with you because he went to Mother and and he is not going to talk to So he was quite surprised. He said, all right, I will never say this to you. Please ask me. Again, three times he went there and Guru was beating him, uh, throwing stones at him. <coughs> but, fellow, you see, I think human beings have this habit. The more you try to discard them, the more they stick to you. Otherwise, if you are kind to them, they don't understand kindness. Fourth day, somehow the other guru met him and he recited a big poem from Sandhari Nahari Bich, Chakana Chalaji, and he sent a gift and said that he did not for us. So he put it on the table and it was in But this fellow has been doing such long things, even now in America, that he dare not come and see you because he's making money out of Sanjo. He is called himself as a Sanjo B and he is curing people. And he's trying to be fool them. It's surprising he's an Indian, but I can't understand why he took to such a thing. In India, we have so many surgeons, thousands, but nobody does like this. I don't know why he's doing like this. So, this is what it is. There are many people, but they don't want to have anything to do with others. They are fed up. I'm trying, yet I'm not giving up. Yeah. <laughs>
excessive fatigue have an effect on your self-realization or impair your powers of discrimination? The judgment of Would excessive fatigue impair your discrimination and have an effect on your self-realization? Excessive what? Fatigue. Time. Excessive physical exhaustion. Excessive fatigue is in fact. It's very simple. You get rid of it. See? What do you have to do? When you have very much fatigue, your right side is exhausted. Alright? Then you put your left side towards the photograph. Because in the beginning you have to use my photograph. Later on you need to. But in the beginning. Even if my photograph is not there, you can put the hand back. And raise your left side. Like this. Left. Raising the left side to the right. Like this. And put it. Even for a heart attack, it's a very important. Even if you have heart attacks, his heart is beating better. You can raise your left side, raise it up, take it out top of your head, and put it down. The fatigue is important. Get back. But once you come to extreme sincerity, you should go up to your point and then finish off. But once the energy is established, connection is established, you send a feedback. You have energy. Right about it. Look at it. I, I have something that that is in a way a question, but it's difficult for me to put it in that form. So I'd like to just say something that that might make it so. Um, I I was listening with a friend yesterday and listening to, to some wonderful music, and and I had I had a, a, a some moments of of real feeling of real of some more realization and sense of the beauty in the world than I have had in the past. It seems to be something that has been growing and developing with what I hear, what I see, as I am still quite a beginner on the spiritual path, but I have, I have been on it long enough to feel this. And, and I was about to remark to my friend that, that it's such a beautiful world and yet, it seems that the more, uh, the more that we do on the positive side in this world, it seems that there seems to be on the always on the other extreme more problems, more um, more um, things that um, that are threatening, threatening us without doubt. And in myself. I feel that as I as I have been trying to develop spiritually, I feel that sometimes, on the one hand, I have moments of, of this type of wonderment, and on the other hand, more and more feelings of fear. So in a way, it's like an internal fear that I that I hope that I will survive without exploding, um, on, on the, without destroying myself in, in this path. And, and in a larger sense, I hope that the world will survive this period that, that it so I think problematic. I've basically heard you, but the basic conflict between what he sees as a growing expansion of awareness and consciousness and the beauty of things, for example, the music he was listening to yesterday to make him closer to his own divinity. But yet on the outside he sees that struggle, that conflict, that fear, and he's thinking, I suppose, a solution. And how does realization You see, that's what I say, that unless an engineer realization is established, you don't become the master of the situation. Now, one must know that if you see a conflict or anything, you don't know how to master it. That's the point. But if you somehow or other get realization established, then what happens that you are out of it? Because you are out of it, you can handle the situation very well. And you are amazed how things work. How things work out and how it uh, helps you. So you don't have to worry. You become just a master. Because you are still not the master. That's why there is a problem. But once you are the master, you can handle all the situation. Then what you do is to give up. You become so confident in give up. Now, for example, now, Dr. Warren. Went to Australia. Now we have how many centers? We have eight centers. And at least three, four thousand people were realized by him. 
So once you become the master, then the, no, nothing can disturb you. You have no fear because you are the master. You know how to You know the master of the ship. When the ship is seaworthy and the master is an expert, he knows how to handle the situation. In the same way, you become the master. That's the point is you have to become the master. Make a chart, right? The question is, please. Yes. Yes, yes. Mr. Yes. You are. Uh, teacher, on our spiritual journey, as we are seekers, how we know a true teacher from a false teacher? On our spiritual path for realization, how do we know a true teacher from a false teacher? It's very simple, my child. I tell you, fine. First thing is that a person who is a true teacher will never take any money from him. He doesn't take it. He cannot sell it. Second, the lifestyle of that person is according to his own parents. Supposing I am a carpenter. The time is like a carpenter in complete beauty and growth. If I am not, supposing I am a wife of such and such. Alright, I need it. But I am completely detached. A person who doesn't give you the experience of the demand is not true teacher. Now it's not responsible. Now how to understand what is the experience of the demand? Because divine does things which human beings cannot do, like a flower becomes a fruit. Alright? Now supposing somebody makes you jump or shout or scream or makes you say some things going to mantra, this that. Anybody can do it, what's so special? Any human being can do it. You can always jump, you can always shout, you can do all that sort of thing. Somebody must have you. It's very simple. But if you get a cool breeze coming out of your head and through your people, you cannot be done. This is divine. <coughs> Anybody who does that is a real teacher. Otherwise, you become the teacher now. Why do you want to teach a You become the teacher. That's why mother is job. Mother is the best teacher I think because she is born a teacher, and she has to. And the teacher who loves was compassion. It's very difficult these days. I wish there were some so my own would be less. But they are so hard to get. So difficult. Any one of them takes my responsibility as a community. Very happy. Because to travel all over the world like this is too much for me. But I don't find anybody who will do with that now and our perfection. They get so annoyed and so easily disturbed. Uh, they want to go back to their peaceful places and they don't want to face what not. I wish you people become experts and do the job. You will do it. Alright? Yes. What's the vibration always be cool and feeling vibration? But I don't have sensation of uh, cold. What do you feel? I, I get vibration. But what, what, how does it manifest? Yeah, I feel the cold breeze. So that's the point. She said she feels no, what she I describes as vibration. No, no, it's not always no, no, no. Cold, no, it should be cold. It should be cool. If it is only vibration, then it's not normal. Right. That means the cold breeze is trying to come in, but there's a little still an obstruction. Right? It's all right. There's nothing wrong with it. It will not go It will not take much time. It doesn't matter. It has started like this. Feeling has started. But if it is the cool breeze coming in the hands, and the cool is not very cool, but cooler, then it is correct. Yes. I have two uh, simple questions. The first is uh, are we evolving collectively as a human race from man to superman? Some leading thinkers have suggested it. Both uh, India and Europe. Could we have one of them? One of them. What is the first question? Let's see. Maybe he wants to connect the two. Oh, yes. Okay. And uh, is uh, Shri Bhattaji the only manifestation of the Adi Shakti, the human body, in this century? <laughs> <laughs> Man to Superman, are we, involve, are we evolving? at this stage from man to superman and is Sri Mataji the only one who is Adi Shakti in a human body? 
on the earth today. Sorry, in this century. <laughs> you better ask the question. You better ask the question. Put your hands up, ask the question. Ask the question. Mother, are you the Adi Shakti? Mother, are you the Adi Shakti? Three times. Mother, are you the Adi Shakti? Yes. Mother, are you the Adi Shakti? Are you feeling the cool vibration on your hand? That's your answer. That's the answer. You are a computer. You can ask any question. And definitely you will be uh, have to work. <coughs> there are just the same everywhere. Unless you have to take a care This is the way you can find it. Whether I'm not sure. All other questions can be asked. The same people can ask, Mother, are you the Holy Ghost? Ah, if you have doubts, ask. Put your hand up. I think that's just to try and up on left hand. It comes on the left hand. Just ask. Close your eyes. Right hand. 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 Left towards Sri Mataji. Right hand up in the air like this. No, no. Like this. Ask. In your heart. Ask it three times. Yes, it's working now. Put the hand at the back side, like this, facing by this, not like this. Hmm. <laughs> he took so much shake, I could not recognize him. How are you feeling all right now? <laughs> what a simple thing has worked out, right? Eh? You should come and see me again. You will normalize that city, now you have your job and everything. Hmm? You are coming to the seminar? You are having a seminar? Uh, right. At the week. At the week. Uh, about 80 miles from here, very nice place. And uh, I don't know what it is. And those who want to come should give their addresses to Dr. Warren. And today is the last day. I don't quite try to come next year, but I can't say that I'm free. But in any case, let's try for the realization. So we put our hands away like this. Let's see how it goes. Let me use up. I think all of you have a catch on the heart. What? On the heart. More on the heart.
You can feel the cool breeze coming out of your head, most of it. Smoking very fast. The safety is there. With your left hand towards me, you can feel it first and then with the right hand, see if the cool breeze is coming. Thank you. 